Funding for this program was made possible by the Committee for a Clean and Beautiful Glendale and California Healthy Cities and Communities. Which lucky Glendale resident won a new car during the Focus on Youth Pancake Breakfast? What is the Mariposa Neighborhood Improvement Project and how will it affect the quality of life for Glendale residents and property owners? How are the students at Horace Mann Elementary School making their neighborhood a better place to live and do business? Join us as we find the answers to these questions and much more on this action-packed episode of NSTV. NSTV. A gem award from the city of Glendale. I'm Juan Gonzalez. And I'm Elena Magadunia. NSTV. Adopt a block program. Youth employment program. Code enforcement minute. Gem awards. Neighborhood services TV. Hi there, Jewel City. I'm Juan Gonzalez. And I'm Elena Magrimian. This is NSTV, your window into the programs and projects sponsored by the City of Glendale Neighborhood Services and its community partners. Greetings from Palmer Park. This month we'll be spotlighting the primary areas of focus for neighborhood services in addition to our regular segments. We've got a great show lined up, so let's not waste any time and get right to it. What's up first, Elena? Youth Employment leads off this month's show. Regular viewers know that Neighborhood Services and its community partners are committed to providing employment and training to the youth of our community. Let's join correspondent Lydia Floyd for a report on this year's Focus on Youth Pancake Breakfast. Focus on Youth on NSTV! Thanks, Juan. Neighborhood Services has partnered with the Glendale Youth Alliance, a nonprofit organization, to provide employment for over 1,000 Glendale youth in the past nine years. Since 1993, the youth of our community have gained valuable work experience and gone on to rewarding careers in many fields. Because the Glendale Youth Alliance, or GYA, is a nonprofit organization, they rely on community donations to operate their programs. Recently, GYA held a fundraising pancake breakfast where they raffled off a beautiful new car. Who was the winner? Let's take a look at this year's exciting Focus on Youth Pancake Breakfast. Thank you, next. Bob Adams, the chair of GYA. Bob, how does providing jobs to youth help the Glendale community? GYA knows that our local businesses need trained workforce and, and our program gives young people the job skills so that they become productive employees. Why is it important for the Glendale community to support the Glendale Youth Alliance? It is important because our youth are our future of Glendale. GYA is committed to providing jobs for as many youth as possible and we cannot do this without the support of our community partners. Shortly before the event I met with Ignacio Troncoso, director of Glendale Water and Power. We asked him why Glendale Water and Power was a dual level sponsor of GYA's programs for youth. In Glendale as in every other community it's important that the youth of, of it, that community be encouraged to grow and develop themselves. So that's the future. You know, if all of us get older and people move on. The young people are what's going to be the, the heirs to every community and hopefully help build it into something better. There's a good payback to, to supporting these activities because we all want productive employees and giving youth the opportunity to experience different work settings and to have the ability to experience and accomplish a job well done pays dividends to all of us. We would all love to have someone who's had a variety of experiences so when they're on board with us, they become effective very quickly. 
After the event, Bob Adams and I presented Glendale's own Stuart Ray with the keys to his new car. I would like to thank everybody who purchased a ticket for the Focus on Youth event. And with me today is Stuart, who won a brand new car. And Stuart, on behalf of the Glendale Youth Alliance, here's the keys to your new automobile. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Stuart. How do you feel? Thank you very much. I feel great. I'm so surprised. What made you buy a ticket? Oh, I saw the opportunity there. It seemed like a worthy charitable cause for something local here, so I just decided to make the contribution and send it in. On behalf of Neighborhood Services and the Glendale Youth Alliance, I'd like to thank all those who supported this year's Pancake Breakfast, especially the grand prize winner. We look forward to next year's event. From the Focus on Youth fundraiser, I'm Lydia Floyd. Back to you, Juan and Elena. Thanks, Lydia. We should point out that Stuart is a dedicated NSTV fan, and that since neither Juan nor I won the car, we're glad it was one of our viewers. Our next focus point is an important issue faced by many Glendale residents and property owners, rental housing quality. Let's join correspondent Noreen Benjaminson for a report on the Mariposa Neighborhood Improvement Project and how it affects the quality of life for residents and property owners alike. Thanks, Juan. The City of Glendale is pleased to announce the Mariposa Neighborhood Improvement Project. Glendale residents will be included in this project if their property or rental unit is located within the Mariposa neighborhood, which is bordered by Broadway on the north, Chevy Chase on the east and south, and Brand on the west. The Mariposa Neighborhood Improvement Project will serve as a pilot program for a future citywide systematic inspection program which will target all residential rental properties with two or more units. The goal of this program is to ensure that all residential rental properties remain in compliance with state and local housing codes. We know that the quality of Glendale's rental housing stock is a result of the investment of money and hard work by the property owners and proper upkeep of the units by the residents. Because many of our residents rely on rental housing to shelter themselves and their families, it is important that this valuable asset be preserved. All property owners and residents will soon be receiving more information by mail regarding the upcoming inspection process and the date their properties and units are scheduled for inspection. The following items are some of the violations Neighborhood Services Inspector Renee Sada and Field Representative Jerry Walton will be looking for when conducting property inspections. Lack of landscaping, flaking or chipping paint, junk and debris, illegal structures such as fences or garage conversions, graffiti, plumbing fixtures in poor repair, inoperable vehicles, missing, defective or improperly installed heating units and smoke detectors, lack of proper maintenance, and general unsanitary conditions. By maintaining properties to state and local standards, you are contributing to the quality of life for your neighborhood and protecting the real estate investment of our community. We appreciate your cooperation and look forward to working with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Neighborhood Services Office at 818-548-3700. For NSTV, I'm Noreen Benjaminson. Back to you, Juan. Hey, Noreen, did you forget I was here too? No, Elena, Noreen didn't forget you. She just had to run off to her next assignment. We'll be seeing her a little bit later in the show for a report on the Adopt-A-Block program at Horace Mann Elementary School. Right now, let's join Code Compliance Inspector Milton Myers for this month's Code Enforcement Minute. What's the topic this month, Milt? Thanks, Juan. This month's Code Enforcement Minute deals with banners. In many neighboring communities, banners are everywhere. Merchants use them to identify themselves, to get you to buy their products or services by putting up large, brightly colored advertisements to get your money. Everywhere you look, sales, 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 and even more sales, except here in Glendale. In an effort to maintain a safe, clean, and uncluttered city with an even playing field among all businesses, the city council has prohibited certain kinds of signage banners and advertising. 
As a general rule, banners are not allowed here in Glendale with a few exceptions. The Glendale Municipal Code allows banners to be placed inside of a store window. The total combined signage, including the banner, cannot cover more than 25% of the total window area. Banners hung inside the store that may be visible from the outside are allowed and do not count as part of the window signage. If you have questions concerning banners or are thinking about putting up a banner promoting your business, please first call the Permit Services Center at area code 818-548-3200 for assistance and information. To report banners in your neighborhood, please contact the Neighborhood Services Office at 818-548-3700. With your cooperation, we can maintain the high quality of life for all Glendale residents. Tune in next month for another Code Enforcement Minute. For NSTV, this is Milt Myers. Now back to you, Juan. Thanks, Milt. Did you notice how Milt forgot about me, too? Oh, Elena, don't feel bad. You know Milt didn't forget about you. He obviously had to go cite someone for an illegal banner. You know what would cheer you up? Introducing the next segment. Well, all right. Once again, it's time for our monthly Gem Property Maintenance Awards. Is one of your neighbors going to be recognized this month? We're here at the Hilda Acacia neighborhood. Check out some of the street trees that were planted nearly six years ago. They seem to be doing great. What a great place to introduce this month's Gem Awards. As our regular viewers know, the Gem Property Maintenance Award recognizes either continuous maintenance or outstanding improvements that enhance not just an individual property, but an overall neighborhood as well. This month, we'll be adding five properties to the list of gems in our jewel city. Let's join correspondent Pam Ellis at the home of Derek Cattell and his son Damon for our first presentation. Thanks, Sam. We're here today at the beautiful home of Derek Cattell and Mark Tara Borelli at 811 West Kenneth. And uh, also joining us today is uh, Derek's son, Damon, who I understand is the gardener, the chief gardener of the project. Uh, Derek, how long have you been in uh, this home and in Glendale? We've been in this home now for about three years, and I've lived in Glendale for about five, and Mark has, I would say, roughly about 12 years. What originally attracted you to uh, this part of town? Uh, the old character homes, not every neighborhood has this kind of uh, 1920s, 30s Spanish homes. Uh, this home uh, must be uh, quite old. Do you have any idea when it was built? This home was built in 1933. Um, it's probably one of the um, younger Spanish homes. What uh, changes have you and Mark made uh, to the property since you've moved in? Um, since we've moved in, we painted the whole, the entire exterior of the home. Uh, we did the landscaping, we put in some flower beds, and we you know, put up a fence outside for additional privacy. It's absolutely gorgeous, and uh, I know uh, at Halloween and Christmas time that uh, you also have additional touches you put on the house. Yeah, we tend to get very festive during um, the holidays. Starting with Halloween, we like to put up, you know, spiders or skeletons, but it seems like the neighborhood likes the spiders the best during Halloween. And at Christmas, you know, we put Christmas trees and whatnot up. About how many trick-or-treaters do you have? That must attract a, a lot of kids up here. Uh, this past year, we it was the slowest year since we've moved in. We had, uh, I would say, about 900 kids, um, but usually we get about 12 to 1,300 <laughs> kids. It's a lot of fun, I know. It's a great neighborhood for that. What's your occupation? I'm a project manager for a technology company based out of um, New Jersey, and um, fortunately, I get to work from the home majority of the time. Um, but that just means I never get to leave my job. And you're never late to work. <laughs> Damon, what makes you get up on Saturday morning to uh, work in the yard? To make it beautiful. <laughs> well, it, we, our hobbies are gardening. Um, one of our hobbies is gardening. So what we do is, you know, we obviously like to work in the yard. 
plant flowers and you know, anything to make it look beautiful. But it's always nice to come home to a nice, you know, maintained home. It makes all the work worth it. And now, Derek, we'd like to present you with a, a Neighborhood Pride Award on behalf of the Committee for a Clean and Beautiful Glendale. Uh, in honor of the work that you've done, uh, your home is certainly a gem in the Jewel City of Glendale. And in addition to this certificate, we have a sign which we'd like to present to you that you can place in your yard for the month. Thank you. Thank you so much. For NSTV, this is Pam Ellis. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Damon. Looks like you've got a great future in gardening and landscaping. Keep up the good work. But it's now time to meet up with our next correspondent, Carol Jean Felkel. Let's join her now at the home of Joe and Susan Stir for our next presentation. Thank you, Sam. Today we're at the property of Susan and Joe Stur, and it's in the Montrose area. And uh, Joe and Susan, how long have you owned this property? A year and a half. We bought it for an investment. And um, we like to play around with units that we buy and upgrade them. You've certainly made it beautiful. And how many units do you have here? Three. Two two bedrooms and one, one bedroom. What year was this property built? In 1952. Oh, it, it certainly looks beautiful for 55, 50 years old. How long have you lived in Glendale? I've lived here uh, since 1960, so uh, 42 years. I was born in Amsterdam, uh, Holland, and um, we were sponsored to come over here, and uh, so we moved to Glendale. And how long have you lived in Glendale? I was born and raised in Glendale. You were smart to stay here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what changes have you made to this property? We, we, fi we finished the hardwood flooring, and uh, we painted and put crown molding and uh, put a dishwasher, dishwasher. In. central air and heat. In this neighborhood, nobody has any backyards, so we decided to put courtyards throughout the place, and so we put pl our uh, planting so it would block the other tenants, so that everybody would have a little privacy. And when we first did this, they had two big li liquid amber trees here, and so we had to have the roots removed because they were going underneath the foundation and into the sewer line. So this uh, big skip loader came, and it took them about a half a day to get two roots out and they weighed 8,000 pounds. What do you do for a living? We cut hair, we're hairdressers, we're both hairdressers, we work together. I've been in the uh, business for 12 years and my husband has for 35. Well, we have this award to give you and you see it says Neighborhood Pride. Someone nominated you because of your property would look so nice and uh, you can frame it, put it and show them so they can see it, and put it on your wall or maybe in your beauty shop. So you do I know you do have one. Yes. Thank you. And um, then we have a, a sign, Neighborhood Pride, that you get to keep for a month. And you can put it in the front so people going by can see that you have been nominated and received an award from the city. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, Sam. Congratulations, Joe and Susan. Your tenants must really appreciate living in such a well-maintained building, and your efforts serve as an example to your entire neighborhood. But let's not forget those gem winners who are unable to appear on this show, but whose efforts should be recognized for their hard work at maintaining their properties year-round. These winners include Clark Fong for his property at 1111 Maryland Drive, the Laughlin family at 3561 El Lotto Drive, and finally, Richard and Alva Wisman for their lovely home at 1933 Bellevue Drive. We appreciate the wonderful work all of you do to keep your properties well maintained and an example to the rest of our community. Pride and ownership is evidenced in all of these properties. Congratulations to each and every one of you for a great job. Well, that does it for this month's GEM Property Maintenance Awards. To nominate a property in your neighborhood for a GEM Award, just call us in Neighborhood Services at 818 548-3700, and as always, we'll take it from there. Now back to you, Juan and Elena. Thanks, Sam. We can't wait to see what you and the committee have in store for us next month. What's up next, Juan? 
Well, Elena, the Neighborhood Services Adopt-A-Block program gives Glendale residents the opportunity to make their neighborhood a better place to live and do business. Let's join correspondent Noreen Benjaminson for this month's Adopt-A-Block Spotlight. Horace Mann Elementary Student Council shows their civic pride by participating in the Neighborhood Services Adopt-A-Block program. Every Monday morning before hitting the books, these dedicated students clean the Mariposa, Garfield, and Acacia boundaries of the school campus. Who's going to clean up Glendale? Horace Mann Elementary School! I recently stopped by to chat with Principal Kim Bishop and some of the students about their participation in the Neighborhood Services Adopt-A-Block program. How long has Horace Mann Elementary been an active Adopt-A-Block group? We started our project with Student Council about six months ago. How did you first hear about the Adopt-A-Block program? Cerritos Elementary School, a school down the street from us, has had an active program for a few years and it was very successful and we decided to copy them. Approximately how many students participate in the Adopt-A-Block activities? On any given day we have between 10 and 20 students and we're sometimes joined by parents and other community members as well. Would you recommend this program to your peers at other elementary schools? I sure would. It's been a great eye-opener for us. It's been a wonderful opportunity to interact with the community. Do you think that the Adopt-A-Block program has helped to instill neighborhood pride among your students? Absolutely. Our students have a new understanding for the community members. There's a new sensitivity to um, their, their yards and their community. And the students have had a great opportunity to do something positive. We've had a number of uh, neighbors and community members come up and show their appreciation and it's, so it's been a great interaction for them. After speaking with Principal Bishop, it was time to talk to the energetic student volunteers. What have you learned by participating in the Adopt-A-Block program? I've learned that um, everyone should take a little bit of time off just to help the community look better and the world to be a better place. I learned that when, I participate, when I'm participating in the program that picking up trash helps your community a lot. Um, I have learned that just by picking up a little piece of trash, trash it, could, um, it could make your whole city beautiful. What I like best about participating in the program is that it's so much fun to uh, pick up trash and your neighbors feel, feel proud of your work. I like after I finish that I, ha I feel good inside because I've helped the community and that the world is now a better place just because of someone who takes time to clean the community. I just want to make your community beautiful and that just because of some, uh, some kids that your world is a whole much better place. You can do your part to keep Glendale litter and graffiti free by participating in the Neighborhood Services Adopt-A-Block program. To sign up or to sponsor an Adopt-A-Block group, contact the Neighborhood Services office at 818-548-3700. From Horace Mann Elementary School, I'm Noreen Benjaminson. Back to you, Juan and Elena. Thanks, Noreen. The students at Horace Mann Elementary really are making a difference in their neighborhood. Keep up the good work, guys. Earlier in the show, we discussed Neighborhood Services' commitment to youth employment. Are you a teen in search of a summer job? If so, this next segment will be of great interest to you. Let's join correspondent Carmen Tartaglia for more information on how teens can apply for a summer job with Neighborhood Services. Thanks, Juan. Are you a youth between the ages of 14 and 17? Do you want to earn some extra money this summer? If you answered yes to these questions, the Glendale Youth Alliance is currently hiring youth to work in a summer youth employment program. Both outdoor fire prevention jobs and office jobs are available. Our staff will decide which job is most appropriate for each youth. If you are interested in participating in the program, you must meet the following requirements. Be between the ages of 14 and 17. Your family must receive public assistance, also called CalWORKs. And you must be enrolled in summer school and taking English, math, or an ESL class. For more information or to apply for the Summer Youth Employment Program, please call 818-548-2790 or 548-2791. For NSTV, I'm Carmen Tartaglia. Now let's rejoin Juan and Elena at Palmer Park. 
Thanks, Carmen. We look forward to reporting on the summer youth employment programs on upcoming episodes of NSTV. Well, we're getting ready to wrap up the show, but before we do, it's time for this month's Code Enforcement Ride Along. Let's go to Code Compliance Inspector Ron Mays as he takes us through some of the neighborhoods in his area. Thanks, Juan. Our first case involves holes in the ceiling and walls from deterioration and lack of maintenance. Let's go check it out. We had holes all in here, and you can tell by the new fresh patching that has been done and corrected. So all I need to do now is take photos. Now I'm going to show you where, what it was like before. They still haven't finished it over here. See, they've done everything I've asked them to do. They just haven't completed this. See, that's what they have to do now at this time. And once they're done, I'll put the whole property for all the violations. Okay, now that we finished that property, we'll be going to the next property. And that will be a 15-day letter that I will be sending if the corrections are made. So, uh, and the next piece of property, it's regarding they did some remodeling without permits. Okay, what we got here is an illegal, illegal shower and bathroom, and we built it for his, for the swimming pool. When people want to go swimming, they want to have an area to take a shower, but you have illegal plumbing. And uh, I sent one letter out to the owner, and he's going to try to get permits, but I don't think he will be able to, so next course of action is he's going to have to remove it. Okay, from here we'll go on to our next case, which is a house that has no landscaping in the front yard. They received one letter, a 30-day letter from me, and you can tell they're in the process of planting because you do see some green coming up at this time, but it's still not completed. So I think as the weather gets better and more rain, it'll come up to the point where it'll pass inspection. And then the code states that you've got to have live plant material, whether it's grass or anything else, but it has to be live plant material. You can't just be, you know, just dirt. Between the curb and sidewalk, that's called your parkway. And you as a homeowner required to maintain it with live plant material. And what they did here, they put blocking. And this is totally illegal. You can't do this. So they'll receive a letter from me regarding landscaping. And the only thing they need to do is remove this and plant live plant material. Here's another property which had a lack of landscaping, but they had complied with the notice I gave them. The process works. And now look at it. And I just sent one notice out. So this is the kind of clients we like to get when it comes to landscaping. So I'm happy with this one. I mean, look at it, it looks great. For our next case, we'll be going to a home that has lots of violations. Illegal carport, that's right here, the patio. Deteriorated flaky paint on exterior siding. Well, see, it looks like they've painted that. Deteriorated the landscaping. How are you doing? All right. Yeah, I'm the inspector with the city of Yeah. Uh, I have taken out already this and then today we're yeah. going to take it out. Uh, yeah, you need to take that thing down. Yeah. Uh -huh. What about your landscaping? Uh, landscaping, uh, I, I make an, uh, I talk to the guy, the one who's uh -huh. fix this. Okay. What about your fence here? How long do you have this? Oh, this one, when, uh, when I bought this? How long ago? Oh, just uh, since 1993. We did a survey on all the fences in Glendale. Yeah. And I know this is an old one. The old one. Yeah. yeah. Now, if, they, if this was put up before 94, um, until there's changes in the code, then we'll probably talk about this Yeah, because this uh, they built, I think this one, they remodeled this, is, I think, 1977. And yeah. then they, they build this right, already. Right. Um, antenna. You gotta have that so you can't have it where it seems like it. it. Has to be covered. Oh really? Yeah, uh, I would put it up on the roof. Oh okay. But and then it's not the side. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, on the roof. Not like that. Oh, okay. I got okay. it uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. I will. Okay, let me give you my card. For Anis TV, I'm Ron Mays. Let's go back to Juan and Elena so they can wrap up the show. Thanks, Ron. I'm sure the viewers enjoyed seeing how Neighborhood Services Code Enforcement staff help maintain our high-quality neighborhoods. For more information on any of the programs featured on today's show, contact the Neighborhood Services Office at 818-548-3700. Well, Elena, we've come to the end of another episode of NSTV. 
On behalf of all the staff at Neighborhood Services, we invite you to join us next month for another action-packed episode of NSTV. I'm Juan Gonzalez. And I'm Elena Magadumian. And remember, keep the Verdugos green and Glendale clean. See you next time. Me, 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 me. <laughs> hey, my goose pimples are... If you have... Yeah. All those who supported this... I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. Oh, okay. <laughs> you might hear that. You know why he's doing that? Because he wants me to do the, the code compliance shuffle. I'm going to show you people what that is. Here we go. This is for you, Alex. <laughs> Are you getting this? There are a lot of bugs here. <laughs> Thanks, Lydia. We sh oh, There's bugs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have worn any perfume. And that since neither Juan nor I won, we're glad it was one of our viewers. <laughs> Like, no, honestly. <laughs> another one, too. There's another one. And another one. And another one. Look at this street all of a sudden so busy. You bought this property for an investment. Yes. And how many units do you have here? We have. <laughs> <laughs> We're here today at the beautiful home of Derek Catal and Mark. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. <laughs> Funding for this program was made possible by the Committee for a Clean and Beautiful Glendale and California Healthy Cities and Communities.